To Americans of another generation, the Chinese were the yellow peril, the menace to free white American labor, scapegoats with pigtails. For a time, they weren't even allowed into the United States. 125 years ago, they were lured to the sugar cane fields of Hawaii by the offer of free passage, $3 a month, and keep. Conditions in the fields were so harsh under white foremen who considered them inferior that they took their meager savings and they moved into towns to set up small businesses. That's how Hawaii's Chinatown got started. Well, today, Honolulu's Chinatown is for the tourists. Most of Hawaii's 52,000 Chinese Americans have moved out into middle-class neighborhoods where once they were barred. Even the Chinese laundry has undergone a transformation. This is the last laundry in Chinatown, owned by Lit Fong. He is 75 and has worked here 52 years. In the old days, he would have passed the laundry on to his son. But Lit Fong's son, Harold Michael Fong, is not likely to become a laundryman. I, Harold M. Fong, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Harold Fong is the new U.S. attorney for Hawaii. His two sons, Terence and Michael, will also go into professions their grandfather Lit never dreamed of at the turn of the century when the Chinese Americans began their voyage of upward mobility. 10,000 firecrackers exploding outside the Hilton Hawaiian village signaled what's going on inside, a Chinese-American wedding. The bride has been educated in Hawaii and New York and works for an airline. The bridegroom is a college graduate, business trained, and executive with an insurance company. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God, it's been so long. Here, in microcosm, is the Chinese-American success story in Hawaii. Within a few short years, mostly since the end of World War II, the Chinese Hawaiians, the Wongs, the Wangs and Fongs, the Liu's, the Ho's and Yi's, the Ching's and Chang's and Chung's, have made it to the great American middle class. Congratulations. The Chinese are fewer than 7% of Hawaii's population, but for quite some time they have been number one in income among the ethnic groups there. The economy of Hawaii today, as in the past quarter century, is dominated by the U.S. military, symbolized by the naval base at Pearl Harbor. On the political power scale, the Oriental American is in the majority in the state legislature, especially the Japanese American. But there is really a sharing of political power with the whites, or haoles, as they're called. And in the private sector of Hawaii's economy, a handful of powerful white families still exert most of the control. But times are changing, and the Chinese Americans have changed the fastest. Indeed, just a few blocks from old Chinatown, there is another world. Tourism has overtaken agriculture. Hawaii is rapidly changing into a service economy where land and banks and insurance and hotels and international trade are surging to the fore. And the Chinese, though few in number, have taken a leading role in the expansion. Chinatown produced this bank 50 years ago when Chinese businessmen couldn't get a small loan from a white bank. So they started their own. Today, the Chinese are into airlines. They're into supermarkets. They're into construction companies. This building is a symbol of real estate, banks, and insurance. The man who founded it went from shoeshine boy to millionaire and then became the first American of Oriental heritage ever elected to the U.S. Senate, a Chinese-American, Senator Hiram Fong. And here's another Chinese-American success story, Chin Ho. Wherever he looks from atop the hotel he just sold for $35 million, Chin Ho can spot something else he owns. From office boy to millionaire, Chin Ho is the stereotype of the Chinese-American merchant prince. Shrewd, clannish, innovative, generous. He was the first Chinese-American to break into the white financial establishment. He is 70, always on the go, buying, selling, trading. The embodiment of Chinese enterprise. What was it like as a young Chinese growing up here in Hawaii? We were hungry uh, for opportunities and we were hungry for education and our means to purchase the kind of food we'd like to have other people would enjoy were very limited. Uh -huh. you, you know, some people compare the Chinese experience here in Hawaii with the Jewish experience in the mainland. I have always felt 
the reason for the success of the Jewish group has been pressure. It's like a, a pot, boiling pot, with the lid placed against it, and when it explodes, it explodes. Uh -huh. And I believe the, the Jewish population and the minority group have been blessed by the pressure built upon them socially and economically. The good ones survive. Betty Ho is a grandmother. She has been married to Chin Ho 40 years. They have six children. Today, she lives amidst wealth. Her early days were a struggle against poverty. Am I right that there are no poor Chinese here in Hawaii? I have not seen one. <laughs> Why? I think the Chinese are very proud people. And we all have this instilled in us from the time we, we can talk and uh, that we must all make something of ourselves, no matter what. And an honest living is the most important thing in the world. And no one should beg for a bowl of rice. Are you and Chin Ho strict parents, or did you spoil your kids a little bit? I think I cracked a whip. Oh, really? Oh, definitely. How else would you bring up this bunch of kids? I can't see how we could have done it any other way. And they're all good kids? I would say so. Now, is that the only way to do it? And is that a peculiarly Chinese quality, to crack the whip, even today with kids? Well, perhaps I brought up my children the way I was brought up. And this was the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. I had very strict, a very strict grandmother, and I had a very straight-laced mother, and, and I'm the end product, and I've just passed it on to my children. Heather Ho, in her early 20s, is the youngest of the Chin Ho brood, and the generation gap is showing. Heather and a young lawyer friend, Ron Munn, were born in Hawaii, both were educated in mainland colleges, and both think there ought to be more to the Chinese success story than just making money and rising to the top. Let's take one issue like the environment. Yeah. I don't think Hawaii right now is that far gone that we can't do something constructive about it. What kind of thing? Um, let's say in terms of development. I think you can stop development on the other islands. Uh, in terms of water pollution, I mean, we have probably the best water in the world here, but it's running out. I was... You realize that you're sitting beside the daughter of a man who is the, one of the biggest developers? I know, I know. Have you ever had an argument with Chin Ho about this? Uh, I don't talk to her father about politics or the environment. We have, we talk about baseball. There are few rebels among Chinese youth in Hawaii. There is also very little juvenile delinquency, and we got some reasons why from the man who may be the best-known Chinese-American in the whole U.S. He is the Chin Ho Kelly of TV's Hawaii Five-0. He is Cam Fong Chun. In real life, he began as a cop on the Honolulu Police Force before he branched out as an actor cop. Is there special reverence for law and order among the Chinese? Is that it? Yeah. Definitely so. I think because, like I said, I'm an Oriental. I am born, raised in the islands. My father came from China. My grandfather came from China. And as far as I can remember, as a youngster, my uh, father instilled in me the thought that uh, I must always respect the family name. Uh -huh. I must not at any time disgrace that family name. Because you see, back home in the old country, my father said that if I did something wrong, if it is home, he disinherited, kicked out of the family. like a Hawaiian travel poster, but it's a real Hawaiian family at home with real guitars and the traditional hula. But what is most typical about them is that they're a family of mixed backgrounds. Three of every five Chinese in Hawaii today intermarry. This girl may not look Chinese, but she is Chinese, Hawaiian, and white. In this case, mostly Irish and German. is reflected in her sisters and brothers. They are almost a 
test tube proof of the laws of genetics. White on their father's side, he is Bill Backron, who works for an airline, and they are Chinese with a dash of Hawaiian on their mother's side. She is the former Laurie Chang. Step on the gas, hey friend, let's go this way. It must be obvious by now that what makes the modern Chinese Hawaiian is a blend of the old and the new. For many, the old culture survives, the old religion. And the old shadow boxing. In Honolulu, as in Canton, whence their forefathers came. the European immigrants who helped build the mainland United States. These two were pioneers, these Asian immigrant laborers who lie buried here in this old Chinese cemetery above Honolulu. They too came across thousands of miles of ocean to seek a better life in a strange land. They found it and they too left behind a legacy, a devotion to hard work, a reverence for learning and a decency toward their fellows. These Chinese Americans helped make Hawaii a green and golden land. <laughs> 